Okay, folks, welcome, and welcome to one of uh, many videos that you will encounter for this course. So this video here, uh, the purpose for this first packet here, it's a bit of self-study. Now, what I mean by that is we're not going to actually have time to go over everything in class, so you're going to need to know some prerequisite topics before we actually begin this course. So, uh, I hope you'll enjoy these. So, this is a bit of my old stuff from when I taught high school. So, without further ado, so what happens here, we do systems of numbers. Now, the reason I talk about these, you know, rational numbers uh, are numbers that can be expressed as a ratio. So, for instance, uh, you know, square root of 4 can be, is rational because it's 2, we can express that as 2 over 1. You know, any number that can be expressed as a fraction is considered rational. Now, that's going to come into play when we do rational zeros. Now, and that's going to be in the fourth unit. Actually, a third unit, technically. Irrational numbers are numbers that is not that are not rational. Uh, they don't terminate nor have any repeating. Now, imaginary numbers are numbers that are just simply not real. So, under complex numbers, which is the main system, you have either reals or imaginary numbers. So, the imaginary numbers are, you know, they include i and anything with a negative radical, such as negative square root of 2. So, that's what you get for that. All right, so, yeah, the purpose of doing this is there is a difference between real and imaginary solutions here. So, properties, now, this may seem very simple, you know, commutative change order, that's going to come into play a little later on. Associative, identity, inverse, distributive, all this good stuff. So order of operations, uh, you, need to, you need to know your order of operations. So one thing I always like to do is whenever I have to do this, you know, just do it straight up in the calculator. You know, when you put, you know, negative in, you have to put it inside of a parenthesis. You know, negatives inside of parentheses. So you have negative 7 squared minus 4 times 3 times 12. And so what we can do is use the graphing calculator. So we're going to use this. So all we got to do here, if we type in negative 7 squared minus 4 times 3, times 12, whoop, not 11, but 12, and by the way, you do need a graphing calculator, that is going to be negative 95. Now, if I don't put the negative in a parenthesis, here's what happens. It does the exponent first, which is what we don't want. If we do negative 7 squared, that will be positive 49. So this is going to simply be negative 95. So for this next one, x equals negative 5, so we'll have 5 times negative 5 squared times negative 6 to the fifth. So all we got to do here is plug this into the calculator. 5 times negative 5 squared times negative 6. And we get negative 972,000. That's a lot. Now, A is negative 4. So, 5 and times negative 4 and negative 7 squared. Well, keep in mind, absolute value of negative 4, absolute value of something is the value of a number without regard to its sign. So, this is going to be 4. 
However, you can actually uh, do this on the calculator. Watch. So five times, now to get absolute value, hit alpha and y equals, and you can scroll over to abs, and then just type in negative four, then times negative seven squared, plus five, multiplying it by negative seven to the fourth and we get 12,985. Now, given that A is nine and B is negative five, you know, six times the square root of nine minus six times negative five squared, and again, we're gonna put that negative into a parenthesis plus eight times negative five raised to the third power. And we get negative 1132. So not a whole bad deal with this. Now combining like terms, this is actually something very basic here. Two terms that have the same variables that are raised to the same power. So for instance, you know, 4xy squared and negative 7xy squared are like terms. So if we had 3x squared and 7x squared, that would be 10x squared. If we did uh, 6x and negative 13x, that would be negative 7x. And then negative 9 plus 12 would just be positive 3. So for this one, you know, negative 3x squared plus 9x squared gives us 6x squared, and notice the color coding on this, which should make it a little bit easier. 7x minus 4x, that would be positive 3x, and then uh, 8 minus 13 would be negative 5. So that's what we get. Now, monomials are single terms with no adding or subtracting. We can multiply and divide variables but not add or subtract. Otherwise, that gets into polynomials, you know, not monomials. So that's what we would get into in that event. You know, binomials would be two unlike terms, such as 3x plus x squared, or 5x to the third minus 8x. Trinomials are three unlike terms, like x squared plus 5x minus 1. That's an example of a trinomial. And the purpose is, you know, trinomials. We're going to be doing a lot of factoring with these trinomials. So if I wanted to expand, you know, exponent is x, x to the fifth is x multiplied by itself five times. So if I wanted to check, you know, 4 to the fourth, which using the graphing calculator, four to the fourth, that will be 256. If you did four times four times four times four, you would also get 256. So four to the six, well, that's just four multiplied by itself six times. X to the fourth is X times itself four times. So product of powers, where basically if you have a to the m times a to the n, you add the powers. So for instance, a times a, well, generally we don't write single power, but you know, a to the first times a to the first, that's a to the second. So this would be a to the ninth. Three times five, you know, it's going to be 15 x to the fifth. And so we can go ahead and simplify these. Hello there, and welcome to the second preliminary video. Now, the purpose of this is to just fill in a gap or two that we missed, so here goes. All right, so uh, 
basically what happens here is, if you remember from the previous video, all you have to do is you would add any exponents together. So for instance, a to the fourth times a to the fifth would be a to the ninth. Now, 3x to the third times 5x to the second, you would have to multi excuse me, multiply these constants so you would get 15, and that would be x to the fifth. Now, if we wanted to simplify this, at, you know, 3 times 4, that's going to be 12. We'll have a to the fifth, and then b to the seventh. For this one here, let's see, 2 times 3 times 5, that would be 30. We have a to the ninth to the twelfth, and then b to the 3 plus 2, that's 5 plus 6, and that is going to be the eleventh. And again, I'm going to say this with all these preliminary videos, this is probably going to seem almost insultingly easy, but it's good to know this stuff. Make sure, you know, in case you slip through any cracks. So for this one, we would have positive 15, because a negative times a negative is a positive, 15d to the 16th. And for this one, we would get 2 to the 75th power. Now, uh, in fact, yeah, I'm going to turn that key press display, 2 to the 30th, and that would be times 2 to the 45th. That's 2 to the 35th times 2 to the 40th. And if we did 2 to the 75th, we get the same thing. So another thing worth noting is some people say, oh, you multiply the 2 and the 2 and you would get 4. That is not the case. So you'd have to make sure you watch out for that. Now, if we have a power of a power here, x to the fifth to the second, basically here's five x's and here's five more. These five powers of x each, you know, there's two clusters of them, so all together we have ten of those. So that'll lead us into a new rule, powers of powers. Basically, if we have something like this, we multiply what's on, you know, multiply the powers together. So for this, we would get b to the 12th, c to the 80th. Now, for this one, we would have 3 to the 4th times a to the 6th. I would accept either one, but you probably should know that 3 to the 4th is, you know, 81 a to the 6th. So for this, you'd have negative 2 to the 20th times 3 to the 16th and make sure that's positive 16 and again you probably don't want to know what that numerically would be you have a to the 12th b to the 28th and c to the 12th you have 4 to the third times x to the sixth times x to the fifth now we're not done yet because you have 4 to the third and since these are not multiplying this is a case where you would add them you'd have x to the 11th plain and simple. Now, product of powers, basically it's sort of a uh, distributing. Now, one thing is, if there's not a power, you can put a 1 there. So for this, you know, we get 3 to the 24th, x to the 12th, y to the 30th, and z to the 60th. Now, power of a power of a power, we get a to the 60th. You know, you could have a to the 12th to the 5th. You could go that route. Or you can even go a to the 4th to the 15th. Doesn't matter. Now, so if I wanted to expand this, you know, 7 to the 9th, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then 7, I mean, 4 7's here on the bottom. Sounds like a slot machine. We can cancel or eliminate four of the sevens, so we have seven to the fifth. Now, we could have gotten that even easier had we just done seven to the nine minus four, or seven to the fifth. And make sure the bases stay the same. So for this, you'd have a to the third, a to the third, 
If you have constants, you divide those. So 15 divided by 5, that's going to give us 3b to the 5th. This will give us 5e to the 3rd, f to the 1st. That first power of f is optional. And then 8 to the 5th over 8 to the 5th is 8 to the 0. But if you did this in the calculator, you would get 1. Now that leads us into yet another rule. Anything to the power 0 is 1. And I could demonstrate that for you. Some big, giant thing to the power of 0. And it's 1. Plain and simple. Now, we're going to multi... We're going to... Put some X's here. There's five of them here, and there will be eight of them on the bottom. So we can cross out individual powers of X, and this will be one over X to the third, or X to the negative third. So this works both ways. So if you have something to a negative power, you would rewrite it as 1 over that to the positive power. So in this case, we would have x to the negative 10, which would become 1 over x to the 10th. Now for this one, we would have a to the negative 80, which ultimately becomes 1 over a to the 80th. Now, if we want to put something else together here, you know, you have 3 to the 4th times x to the 20th times 4 times x to the 10th. 3 to the 4th times 4, that's 81 times 4, uh, that is 162, uh, but x to the 30th, yeah, 81 times 4, that would be... 324 x to the 30th. Now you have 2 to the negative 3, x to the negative 9, y to the positive 12th. Now if we write this with only positive exponents, uh, the y to the 12th will stay up on top, but you would have 2 to the 3rd, x to the 9th. Now for a quotient of powers, basically it's just like the rule on the outside. So for this one, you'd have x to the 8th over y to the 12th. Now, for some things like these, I like to simplify what's inside first. So what happens is 2 over 4 becomes 1 half, you know, x to the 2nd, y to the 2nd. But don't forget, we have that power of 3. So what happens is we would get x to the 6th, y to the 6th over 2 to the 3rd. And we can simplify that to you know, x to the 6th, y to the 6th over 8. Now for this one, we can't really simplify anything inside. You have x to the negative 4, y to the negative 4 over 2 to the negative 4 z to the negative 4. Now if you have negative exponents in the, denom in, in the denominator, just move those upstairs. So basically we're just going to flip things. 16z to the 4th, x to the 4th, and y to the 4th. So again, this may seem like really uh, elementary rules for you, but you know you never know when you might see this. So adding and subtracting and multiplying polynomials, you've got to combine like terms. So if you notice, 3x squared and 6x squared, they're like terms. They have to have the same variable with the same power. So that is going to give you 9x to the second. Now, for the next part, you have positive 4x and negative 5x, so that would be negative 1x or minus 1x. And then 3 and negative 9, so minus 6. That's it. Now, we're going to do one with the distributive property. If 3x squared minus 4x plus 1 plus, now in the past some have called this the rainbow property. 
you have 16x minus 4. Now, notice that 3x squared has nothing to go with it, so we're just going to stop at it right there. Now, we have some more like terms. You have negative 4x and positive 16x, and that will give us positive 12x. And then lastly, uh, positive 1 and negative 4 to give us minus 3. All right, so for this next problem, we're going to use the distributive property here. So we'll see something like that. For this first one, you have 5x squared minus 4x plus 1 minus 6x to the third. And negative times a negative is a positive, so that'll be 8x squared and then minus 10. So now, uh, let's see here. We'll start in descending order. Let's see here. We have only negative 6x to the third. And you know, 5x squared and 8x squared, that's going to be positive 13x squared. There's nothing to combine with negative 4x, so it's just going to stay that. And positive 1 and negative 10, that's going to give us negative 9. So that's combining like terms for you. Now, degree of the polynomial happens to be the highest exponent that is found in a polynomial. Now, it's going to have an effect when we divide or multiply polynomials. So degree of a linear equation, uh, it's going to be 1. Like, you know, 3x minus 1, it's the highest power of x. So what happens here? is, you know, 3x times 2x plus 4, that's going to become 6x squared plus 12x. Now, the degree of each of these is 1. The degree of the product is 2. Now, for this one, we would have 6x to the 4th minus 8x to the 3rd plus 4x to the 2nd. So the degree of the first part is 2. The degree of this is 2. And the degree of this is 4. So basically, when you multiply polynomials, you add the corresponding degrees. Now, if there's more than 2, just add the degrees. Now, when multiplying two binomials together, binomial means you know, it's two unlike terms. So x plus 1 times x plus 3, we can either FOIL. Now, FOIL's kind of an interesting little trick. It works. Don't get me wrong. You know, x plus 1 and x plus 3. You know, the FOIL first, x times x, that's going to be x squared. The outer terms, x times 3, to give you 3x. The inner terms, 1 times x for just 1x, and the last terms, 1 and 3, is 3. And all you have to do now is make sure any like terms are combined. 3x and 1x combines to 4x. So basically you have x squared plus 4x plus 3. That's all you get. Now, I like to make tables with these. And here's why. You know, x plus 1, and then you have x plus 3. And what you do here, x times x is x squared. Here you get 3x. Then you get 1x. And then 1 times 3 is 3. Combine any like terms. So basically, you just get x squared plus 4x plus 3 when it's all said and done. So, doesn't matter what goes where. Alright, so we're going to make tables here. I prefer to do tables. And it doesn't matter what goes on what side here. So for this one, you know, I'll put x plus 4 across and then x minus 3 right around here. 
So x times x, that's going to be x squared. You have minus 3x. You have 4x and then negative 12. Combining all like terms gets us x squared plus 1x minus 12. Or, you know, that 1 that's in front of that x is purely optional. Now, a special case would be, you know, 2x plus 1 to the second power. What you would have to do here is basically multiply it like this. It is not... 4x squared plus 1. And just like before, you know, 2x plus 1, 2x plus 1. 2x times 2x, that is 4x squared. You get 2x here, 2x, and 1. So here, you have 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. Now, in a later video, you're going to learn how to... Uh, factor this by breaking it apart. So basically, the degrees of each factor and the degree of the product, they are simply added together. All there is to it. Now, if we multiply polynomials by polynomials, and I say that because you know, this is a 3 by 2. So this is where a table really would be important. Now, this is going to be important, particularly when we get into writing polynomials. So, and then we will combine any like terms in the end. 2x squared times x, that's 2x to the third. You get negative 4x squared. You get 2x, you get negative 2x to the second, you get positive 4x, and then negative 2. So 2x to the third has nothing common with it. However, these two are common. You get negative 6x squared. These two are common, so you would get positive 6x, and then the minus 2 at the end. And for this one, this one's going to be a little more of a challenge. You know, x squared minus 5x plus 1. Then for the other part, you get your 2x squared minus 4x plus 3. So... 2x squared times x squared, that's going to be 2x to the fourth. That would be, you'd have negative 5, oh, not negative 5, got to watch myself, negative 10x to the third, and then you have 2x squared, we get negative 4x to the third, you get 20x to the second, negative 4x, we get 3x squared, uh, let's see, that would be negative 15x, and then 3. So then you get 2x to the 4th. Now these two combine to negative 14x to the 3rd. This combines to, let's see, 23, 25. 25x squared minus 19x plus 3. And just like before... All you have to simply do is add the degrees. Now, what about dividing by, you know, polynomials by monomials? Now, this is important, particularly when we are going to get into uh, polynomial division. That's going to be, that's a little off, but it's good to know how to do this basic stuff here. So... Basically, we divide by monomial. You divide each individual term. So for this, you get 2x to the second minus 3x plus 2. Now, for some reason, my one note doesn't like to do this. This was an x. So all we got to do is divide the individual terms. So 
So for this, we would have 6x minus 2x squared plus 3. Now, I would perfectly, I would have accepted that perfectly without any problems. Now, some would say if you had to write it in descending order, you would write it as negative 2x squared plus 6x plus 3. Now, again, either one is right, but if they ask for descending order, there it is. So then we'll divide individually here, 45x to the fourth over 10x squared minus 25x to the third over 10x squared plus 10x squared over 10x squared. So 45 over 10, that simplifies to 9 halves x squared or 4.5x squared. This is 5 halves x, or minus 2.5x, plus 1. All right, so that's how all of this is going to work here. So I'm going to end this video here. This is part two in the series, so hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Hello, folks. Uh, welcome back here to... Uh, one of many videos here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start here on page 10 of the preliminary packet and what this will do is uh, give you the basis you need to factor quadratic equations. So this might seem really easy to you but we're going to try to fill all gaps. So all this is just going to build towards our main goal of factoring quadratics. So you learned how to make factor trees and whatnot. So first thing you need to do here, find the greatest common factor of 5 and 8. Well, that's simply going to be 1. That's all we can take out. 13 and 19, that is 1. And if the greatest common factor of a set of numbers is 1, then we consider those to be relatively prime to one another. So 20 and 35, 5 is the greatest number that we can take out. 10 and 14, it's only going to be 2. 14 and 21 will be 7. 15, 25, and 30, that will be a 5 as well. So, finding the GCF, we first have to find the GCF of the coefficients. It might be 1, don't worry. And then find the largest power that you can take out. And since, remember, exponents add and subtract, so the largest power of x I could take out of this is x to the second. For this one, it will be x, or x to the first, and 4x to the third and 10x to the fourth, well, between 4 and 10, that's a 2. This is going to be 2x to the third. So if we want to factor, we're going to factor by, you know, just greatest common factor, we can take out a 4x to the second out of all three of these terms. And when you divide out, you, know, you kind of just do that mentally. So that's how this all works. So I can take out for this a 4x. Now, 4x times what is 4x squared? Well, that's just a x. And then since that's a minus, oh, not a 4x, but rather a 2x. So I've actually made an error. So I can only take out a 2x here. So 2x times what is 4x squared? Well, that's 2x, and then that would be minus 3x squared, and then plus 6. And that's factored completely. Now for this one, I could take out a 5x squared out of everything. So 5x squared times 2 then plus 3x minus 5x squared plus x to the fourth. And you'll be told in no uncertain terms how to factor. Now, factor by grouping, we look only at the first and last two terms. So, and what happens here is, yeah, x squared plus 5x plus 3x plus 15. Uh, it does simplify to x squared plus 8x plus 15. But 
we're going to find out, we're going to learn today where the 5 and the 3 came from. So, but what happens here is we factor the greatest common factor out of the first two and the last two. The first two, it's just going to be x, then x plus 5, and then a 3 comes out. And magically, the x plus 5 is common to both. So then it becomes x plus 5 times x plus 3. So for this one, uh, I'm going to take out just an x out of these first two. So that'll give me x plus 6. And since there's a minus here, I'm going to take out a negative 4. And what happens here is this will become x 24 divided by negative 4 is uh, Oh, this should have been a minus 24 anyway. So x plus 6. So what happens here is this becomes x plus 6 times x minus 4. Now, you'll see examples in class. I'm going to go through this. Now, if I want to do these using factor by grouping, so all I got to do is take out the greatest common factor of the leading terms for these first two. It is going to be 2x to the second, which gives us x minus 5. Now for the last two, there's nothing I can take out, so it's just going to have to be a 1. So we have x minus 5 times 2x squared plus 1. And that's it. So how can I factor this one? Well, I'm going to take a negative 2x out, and that will be x minus 3. And I could take a positive 3 out and giving me x minus 3. So what happens here is I have x minus 3 multiplied by negative 2x plus 3. Or I can rewrite this, obviously, as x minus 3 times 3 minus 2x if I really want. So that can be done. And we're going to continue on here. 6x squared and 21x. Well, I could take a 3x out of that, giving me 2x minus 7. And between 4x and 14, I can just take a 2 out. And that's 2x minus 7. So what happens here is I have 2x minus 7 and I multiply that by 3x plus 2, and I'm done. Now, I'm going to do the same thing here. x multiplied by x plus 4. And then I can take a 4 out. That's x plus 4. So what happens here is this becomes x plus 4 times itself. I would accept this because this is perfectly fine, but we can also say it is x plus 4 squared. So, not bad. So, why did we break down the x squared plus 8x plus 15? Why did it become 5 and 3? Why not say 6 and 2, 4 and 4, negative 10 and 2? Well, if we try factoring by grouping, what happens here is the parentheses are not the same. So when we've done all this factor by grouping, the parentheses have been the same. So this is a big no. That won't work. I could take out an x and just a 1 here. Still no good. And I could take an x out here. And notice the parentheses are not the same in any way, shape, or form. So. What did you notice about all three of these? Well, in other words, none worked. So since none of them worked, you know, so where did this come from? Why? So what you have to do is look at the coefficient of the linear term. They have an 8, and then a constant term, which is 15. So 5 and 3, well, 5 plus 3 is 8. 5 times 3 is 15. So we need two numbers that have a sum of 8 and a product of 15. Those magic numbers were 5 and 3. Now, 
So if we want to try something else, let's try this one. We need two numbers that have a sum of positive 3 and a product of negative 10. This will always, these should always factor. So if you're having trouble, well, you might have to list numbers. Uh, 5 and negative 2 are going to be my magic numbers. So we could type in, you know, write up x squared plus 5x minus 2x minus 10. Notice that the first term and the last term stay the same. All we are doing is writing, is rewriting the middle term. So we could take an x out of those and a negative 2 out of those. And that gives us x plus 5 times x minus 2. Now, here's something else, and this only works for polynomial for trinomials with a leading term of 1. 5, that became x plus 5. Poor highlighting, I know. And then the negative 2, I'm actually going to use a different color. Yeah, there we go. Negative 2, that will go here. And again, that only works if the coefficient is 1. So what happens here, you know, it doesn't matter which order we were to place the middle term. So for instance, the previous example, if we did x squared minus 2x plus 5x minus 10, it won't matter. Now, you, you're going to have to know how to do this when we get into polynomials where the leading term is not 1. But nonetheless, it is x minus 2 and x plus 5. So, I need two numbers in this case with a sum of 3 and a product of negative 18. Ah, that would be 6 and negative 3. So, I could, I'm actually going to change this, you know, to x's, 6x minus 3x minus 18. I'm going to go through the whole factor by grouping. x times x plus 6 minus 3 times x plus 6. And this becomes x plus 6 times x minus 3. Now, if you really want to skip that step, you know, we have 6 here x plus 6. If you have negative 3 here, it is x minus 3. So these you should be able to do. So I need two numbers that have a sum of positive 3, a product of negative 4, and that would be 4 and negative 1. So I can just do k plus 4, then k minus 1, and I'm done. I need two numbers that have a sum of negative 10, and in this case, the product is positive 25, negative 5 and negative 5. So this would be h minus 5 times itself, and that's all you're going to get. Now, what if we have a special case, you know, x squared minus 25? This is a special case. We can do factor by grouping, and they are going to be 5 and negative 5. Basically, what happens here is we have x plus 5 and x minus 5. So this is a difference of squares rule. Now, how the difference of squares rule, basically, uh, the square root of, you know, x squared is x. Square root of 1 is 1. So this would be like x minus 1, x plus 1, h minus 7, h plus 7 p minus 12, and p plus 12, and then r plus g, r minus g. And that's all you have to do. Now what about this case where the leading term is not 1? All right, so if you have something where the a, the leading term is not 1, well, we need to split this 11x into two smaller parts. So we're going to try some factor by grouping. We can take an x out. That'll be 2x plus 5 plus, let's see, we can take a 6 out. That'll be x plus 2 
That's a big N-O. Let's see. I could take a X out, giving us, let's see, 2X plus 3. I could take a 4 out, giving us 2X plus 3. Oh, we do have the same thing in our parentheses. So this will be 2X plus 3 times X plus 4. And this one will end up failing us. 2x times x plus 1 plus 3 times 3x plus 4. Well, it doesn't matter. So, how did this come about? Why did this middle one work? Well, 3x and 8x. So, obviously, 3 plus 8 is 11. Now, 3 times 8 is 24. But where does the 24 come from? Well, look at you know, 2 and the 12. That's where it comes from. So effectively, this is the way it's always been, except our leading term has always been a 1. So in this case, you know, that was just an identity. So you need two numbers that have a sum of the middle term. That never changes. And whatever they have a product of A times C. So for instance, this one, I need two numbers that have a sum of 9 and a product of 8. Oh, 8 and 1, real simple. So 2x squared plus 8x plus 1x plus 4. So, let's see, I could take out a 2x giving me x plus 4. And I can just take a 1 out giving me the x plus 4 here. So we'll have x plus 4 times 2x plus 1. Or you can just change the order and you could say x plus 4 times... Oh, already did that. It would be 2x plus 1 times x plus 4. So for this next one, we need a sum of negative 11 and a product of negative 60, because that's 5 and negative 12. So the two numbers that make this work are negative 15 and positive 4. So we'll have 5x squared minus 15x plus 4x minus 12. So factor by grouping, I'll take a 5x out, giving us x minus 3, and then a 4 out of this. So this will be x minus 3 times 5x plus 4. And that's all she wrote. So for this next one, you know, 3x squared plus 4x minus 4, we need two numbers that have a sum of 4 and a product of negative 12. And that would be 6 and negative 2. So 3x squared minus 4 on the ends plus 6x minus 2x. And then factor by grouping, I can take a 3x out of this, giving me x plus 2, then minus 2, multiplying that by x plus 2, and that will give us x plus 2 times 3x minus 2. Now again, where did this negative 12 come from? Well, that was 3 times negative 4. So for this last one, I need two numbers that have a sum of negative 11 and a product of 18. And they will be negative 9 and negative 2. 6x squared minus 9x minus 2x plus 3. We factor by grouping again. Let's see, that will be 3x and that's 2x minus 3, and since this is negative, we'll take a negative 1 out, that will be 2x minus 3, 
So 2x minus 3, and 3x minus 1. Now, differences of squares also can apply. Remember, now, sums of squares will not factor. Square root of 9x squared is 3x. You know, 1 will be 3x minus 5, then we'll have 3x plus 5. 4x minus 11, 4x plus 11. 5y minus 12, 5y plus 12, and then 2y minus 7x, and then that is going to be multiplied by 2y plus 7x. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this part of the video. So you should have enough to factor this if you ever need to. So hope you enjoyed. All right, welcome back here, folks. So this, this video here uh, starts on page 15 at the bottom, at the bottom of your notes, page 15. This is part four. So this is going to fill in a gap for radicals and finish off something about quadratics. Now, if we wanted to factor a quadratic like this, traditionally you could find two numbers that have a sum of 10 and a product of 24, which are 6 and 4. And what happens here is we factor by grouping, or you could have done 6x plus 4x, but what happens here, you know, the x plus 2 is common, and it's multiplied by 2x plus 6. However, the 2x plus 6 can be factored as 2 times x plus 3. So even the, each coefficient is even so that a 2 could outright be factored out. So your best step here, best idea, is to factor the 2 out first and then leave it aside. Now, if I wanted to factor something like this, we'd have to find two numbers with a sum of negative 56 and a product of negative 512. Ugh. But 8 is common to all terms, and yeah, it's obvious all the numbers are even, so you could factor a 2 out. You know, you could just keep factoring 2s out, but ultimately you would be factoring an 8 out of it. And you can even factor variables right out, right off of the bat, too. So we're going to see how that works here. So for this, if we notice, yeah, uh, we have some pretty big numbers to deal with here, but all three of these are divisible by 3. So we would have 3 times 2x squared plus 5x plus 2. Now, this 3, we're going to kind of just put off to the side for a little while. So we need to find, we need to factor 2x squared plus 5x plus 2. So the two numbers we need, we need a sum of 5 and a product of 4. The 4 comes from the 2 and 2. And those two numbers are, in fact, 4 and 1. So, you know, you get 2x squared plus 4x plus 1x plus 2. And then you factor by grouping. You factor this whole thing by grouping. And we can take a 2x out of this, giving us x plus 2. And we can factor a 1 out of this, giving us x plus 2 here. So this is x plus 2 multiplied by 2x plus 1, or vice versa. But, don't forget, we took the 3 out, so we've got to bring it back. So, the final answer is going to be 3 times x plus 2 times 2x plus 1, when all the smoke clears. That's going to be your final answer. Now, for this next one, I know I could factor a 2 out. And if I did that, I would have 2 times 4x squared plus 22x minus 42. So those are all even, so I can take another 2 out, which gives us 2x squared plus 11x 
minus 21, or 4 times 2x squared plus 11x minus 21. So what we can do with that, we're going to we're going to bring the 4 back a little later. We need two numbers that have a sum of 11 and a product of negative 21. Oh, well, not negative 21, but negative 42. Because remember, 2 and negative 21 are the magic numbers. So they're going to be 14 and negative 3. Wow. So you have 2x squared plus 14x minus 3x minus 21. And then we go through the whole factor by grouping method. We could take a 2x out of this, giving us x plus 7. And I could take a 3 out of this, and that'll give us x plus 7. So you have x plus 7 times 2x minus 3. But keep in mind, what did we take out earlier? The 4. So we got to put it back. And that's what we're going to get. Now you can also verify this graphically that it happens to match if you really wanted to. You know, 8x squared, if I go to the graphing calculator, I get 8x squared, that's plus 44x minus 84. And one thing I can do is, you know, 4 times x plus 7. And 2x minus 3. So if I go to graph that, and you'll see this in class. You'll see why I kind of do this in class the same way. They're the same thing. So, yeah, we know for a fact it works. All right, so that's going to now enable us to move on to uh, radical stuff. Now, there is another... The video after this, this is part four that we're making here. Part five will just pick up right where this leaves off. So, so uh, what happens here, and we're going to see this uh, when you're solving quadratic equations. Uh, sometimes a quadratic equation might not be factorable. In that case, you would have to use either completing the square or the quadratic formula. Now, if we wanted to find the zeros of this, they're not going to be rational zeros. In fact, yeah, this is go they're going to be irrational. Now, mathematically, the, the zeros or the solutions are 3 plus or minus 2 root 5. Now, 2 times the square root of 5, well, that square root is a radical. Now, a lot of our solutions will involve radicals here. Now, we're dealing with square roots. Now, a square root could either have the two or without it. Now, we're only going to primarily be dealing with square roots here. Now, radicand is whatever's underneath the radical. Now, any other roots such as cube, fourth, or something higher, they're going to have to contain the root. So basically, 5 is the square root of 25 because 5 multiplied by itself is 25. Uh, cube roots are what we'd have to multiply by itself three times. Now, this little explanation shows that finding the, you know, the square root of something is the same as raising it to the one-half power. So, for instance, 325, it's going to be some 18.02. And if I raise that 325 to the one-half power, like this, it's the same thing. Now, how can we manipulate these radicals? Well, so... The purpose of this here, a uh, couple of set of rules, uh, the square root of a times b would be equal to the individual square roots. Now that's important, especially when we break things apart. 
So, and dividing, so this, these rules actually work both ways. So if we have the square root of A over B, it is equal to the individual quotient of the square roots. So square root of 5 times the square root of 6 should equal the square root of 30. So, yeah, square root of 5 times the square root of 6, and it's going to equal that and the square root of 30. Now, there are calculators that actually do simplify radicals, which is cool, but we're only gonna be dealing with square roots here. So, square root of three times the square root of seven is gonna be the square root of 21. Now, this will become the square root of six. You know, square root of 12 over the square root of two. Now, here's the other thing. Square roots do not like cancel out or anything that they have to stay as a square root and consequently this is going to become the square root of 13 so that's what we're going to get here now if there's numbers in front of radicals uh, when you multiply or divide them you multiply holes by holes radicals by radicals and the same thing goes with division so this would be 15 times the square root of 14. This would be 3, 12 over 4 is 3, times the square root of 3. Now, the purpose, there is a purpose to this. Uh, you know, when I taught high school, I, you know, I talk about SOL tests, but final answers, particularly on my lab, you're going to have to be able to do do them in radical form. So, for instance, if I wanted to simplify the square root of 12, we want to break 12 down into a product of primes. And what we can do is end up taking the square root of each factor when it's all said and done. Now, why is it that, so square root of 12, you know, 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. Now, the square root of 12, it'll follow that it's root 2, root 2, and root 3. Now, if I write this at, write these as rational exponents, how many halves make a whole? It's 2. And that's why you would need two of the same radical. So, what could happen here, you know, you could do square root of 4 times square root of 3, but ultimately that just becomes 2 root 3. So... For instance, you know, 2 times the square root of 3, the decimal equivalence is 3.46. And let's see, the square root of 12 should give us the same thing, and it does, which is nice, which is good. Now, if I wanted to break apart square root of 45, now I know I didn't leave you the proper room to do this. Now. 45, we need to break that down into a product of primes. Now, what you could do is you can make a factor tree. You know, 45 would be 5 and 9. Now, I, I circle the 5 because that's a prime. And then the 9 is 3 and 3. So, if 45 is 3 times 3 times 5, square root of 45 is going to be root 3, root 3, root 5. And what happens here, these two become just a, sim a simple 3, and then square root of 5. You can verify that using the graphing calculator, if you so desire. Now, 24, that's going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. So, it'll follow that Square root of 24 is root 2, root 2, root 2, and root 3. So we need two of the same thing here. So this will become 2, but we still have something left over. Now, you don't have to put this multiplication sign here. I do, because I, you know, I just do that. But these, this isn't going to simplify to a whole number, but it will become 2 times the square root of 6. So, if we have something in front of these, now what we'll do is 
we're going to hold this 5, this whole number 5, we're going to kind of put that off to the side here. Now, 8 is simply 2 times 2 times 2. So it'll follow that root 8 is root 2, root 2, and root 2. So this will simply become 2 times the square root of 2. So the original 5, and then times 2, root 2, this square root of 8 got replaced with this. Ultimately, we are going to get 10 root 2. And you can verify that using the graphing calculator, if you so desire. Now, 4 times the square root of 28, well, let's see here. 28 would be 7 and 4, and then 2 and 2. Now, you can do shortcuts, if you so desire. I'm not going to really push them as much. But, you know, 4 times root 7 times root 2 times root 2. So basically this got replaced with this. So 4 times 2 times root 7, that will become simply 8 root 7. Now for this, 18 is going to be 2 times 3 times 3. So you have negative 3 times root 2, root 3, and root 3. This becomes a 3. So ultimately we get negative 9 root 2. All right, so that's where this video is going to end. So this is part four. Uh, parts five and six are already linked, and part seven will be worked on. Thank you. Good day. Okay, folks, welcome back to this lesson here. So what's going to happen is this is going to be the first of many help videos. Because we're not going to get to every possible example in class, we're going to have to do you're going to have to view a lot of these on your own. Now, the notes should be help, but I like to do videos because I'm kind of a control freak about that. So, to factor this quadratic, we're on page six here, by the way, you need two numbers that have... You need... Yeah, so they're going to have a product of negative 12. So, what's going to happen here is we figure out those two numbers. Those two numbers are going to be 6 and negative 2. So what will happen is we have 3x squared minus 4 on the end, but instead of 4x, we can write this as 6x minus 2x. And then we can factor by grouping 3x squared plus 6x, so we have to take the greatest common factor out of both sets. For this, it is going to be 3x, and you will have x plus 2, and since we have a negative here, we're going to factor out a negative 2, and we're going to get x plus 2. So, what happens is, we have x plus 2 that's common to both, and then it'll be multiplied by 3x minus 2. And that is the final answer. That's the factored form. End of story. So we're also we're now going to also do this one. We need two numbers that have a sum of negative 11 and a product of positive 18. Where do we get the positive 18 from? Well, remember, 6 times 3, that's 18. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to figure some things out. What two numbers give us, first off, it's a negative sum and a positive product. So, both numbers are going to be negative. They're going to be negative 9 and negative 2. Now, you might have to list the values or whatever. You know, sometimes you might just not have enough number sense. You might have to list the values. You know, that's the way it's going to be with factoring these. So, 
we have 6x squared minus 9x minus 2x plus 3. I didn't color code this one like I did the previous one. Uh, we'll take the greatest common factor out of the first and the second one. For the first two, it's going to be 3x, and it'll be multiplied by 2x minus 3. And we'll take away uh, negative 1, since nothing goes into 2x and 3, you have to use a 1, and it'll be 2x minus 3, because negative 1 times negative 3 is a positive 3. So we're going to get 2x minus 3 multiplied by 3x minus 1, and that will be the final answer. So I hope you enjoyed this. Hello everyone, welcome back to the lesson here. So this video is to just give you some extra examples. So if there's a number in front of the radical, all you got to do is simplify the radical and multiply any whole number. So for instance, if the square root of 45 is 3 root 5, which we learned earlier, and there was a 4 in front, you multiply holes by holes, radicals by radicals, and you simply get 12 times the square root of 5. Now, if you recall, the square root of 24 is going to be 2 root 6. So you have negative 3 times 2 root 6. So remember, the holes by holes, radicals by radicals, you have negative 6 times the square root of 6. Now for these, Basically, you kind of treat these as their own variable. 3 times the square root of 2 plus 5 times the square root of 2 is simply going to be 8 times the square root of 2. Alright, so what we have here is square root of 5. So basically, you just add what's in front here, and you're going to get 6 times the square root of 5. Now, for this last one, Notice that we have different radicals, and the good thing is that they are irreducible. So you'd have 3 times the square root of 11 plus 10 times the square root of 3. Now, again, this is something that you probably won't see, but it's worth knowing. I think anything is worth knowing. So moving along, if you have the preceding scenario, basically you can simplify each radical. Now, if you remember... The square root of 8 is simply 2 root 2. So you have 2 times 2 root 2. Now 3 times the square root of 32. We need to figure out square root of 32. I'm just going to do this quickly. It's going to be equal to square root of 16 times the square root of 2, which gives us 4 root 2. So plus 3 times 4 root 2. So you have 4 root 2 plus 12 root 2. Ultimately, you're going to get 16 times the square root of 2. Now, for the next one, square root of 3 doesn't simplify anymore. Now, square root of 12 is going to become root 4 times root 3, or simply 2 root 3. Now, you have 4 root 3 minus 6 times 2 root 3, which equates to 4 root 3 minus 12 root 3, or negative 8 root 3 for your final answer. Now, for the next part, do some FOIL style. This is going to help whenever we get into complex numbers. Now, what we can do here, remember, it's holes by holes, radicals by radicals. So, I can put this, let's do this FOIL style, 3 plus square root of 2, then 3 plus root 5. So we do that. So you have 9, and then 3 root 2. 3 times root 5 is 3 root 5. Root 2 times root 5 is root 10. Now, this one's going to be a little ugly here, folks. It's going to equal 9 plus 3 root 2 plus 3 root 5 plus the square root of 10. And unfortunately, that cannot be simplified any further 
So that's what we're going to simply have to deal with. Now for this second one, this is going to come up plenty of times for us, especially when we get into the complex numbers. If I do 8 minus 4 root 3 here, and then I'm actually going to move this over to save a little space. Make that smaller here, sorry about that. And that way I'll have some more room. And I'll just move this around a little. So, we'll have 8 times 8 minus 4 root 3. Multiply that by 8 plus 4 root 3. So, 8 times 8 is 64. 8 times 4 root 3 is going to be 32 root 3. You have negative 32 root 3, which the nice thing is that's actually going to end up canceling. Now, you'll have negative 16 times 3 here. Now, this will cancel, so basically you'll be wet left with 64 minus 48, or simply 12. So, the last one here, when you multiply two terms that are of that form, you're going to get a nice rational number. They're called radical conjugates. Now, the purpose of that is to simply get us, that's going to help us, especially when we get into complex numbers. Now, we're going to do something called rationalize the denominator. Now, I'm not sure exactly how much we're going to see it, but this is going to help you. So, to rationalize the denominator, what you need to do, you cannot have a radical inside of the denominator. So, what you need to do is you need to rationalize the denominator. So, for instance, if I want to rationalize this denominator, what we want to do is get rid of that square root of 2. So, we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by it, do some math, and that's going to be your final answer. Now, you're allowed to have radicals in the numerator, but you're not allowed to have them in the denominator. So, if I want to get rid of this, I can go ahead and just simply multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 2. Now, what happens here is I'm going to get 5 times the square root of 6 over 3 times 2, or simply 5 root 6 over 6. Notice that 6 here is a nice rational number, so what we've done now is we have rationalized the denominator. Now, falling back to a rule that we remember from earlier, we can simplify this as the square root of 7 over the square root of 8. Now, we know the square root of 7 cannot be simplified, but 8 becomes 2 root 2. So what I want to do for this one is multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 2. So to do that, and ultimately, I'm going to get the square root of 14 over 2 times 2, or simply 14, square root of 14, rather, over 4. Now, little interesting side note here. If I had wanted to, I'm actually going to do this problem a second time and give you kind of an option. Remember, seven, root 7 over root 8. Now, Let's say I multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 8. Now, truth is, you're going to have the square root of 56 over 8. However, that's going to need to be simplified, so you have to do some simplifying in the end. Now, we know the square root of 56 is going to be 2 times the square root of 14, and that will simplify, obviously, to 2 times 4. And you get the same thing either way. So, that, folks, is how you rationalize a denominator like that. Now, if you have a case like this where it's 4 minus 2 root 3, this is where conjugates come into play, folks, where you have to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate. Now, in this case, we multiply the numerator and denominator by 2 plus the square root of 3. So, in doing that, we multiply, and we do some math here, and we simply get 8 plus 4 times the square root of 3. 
Now, when we multiply the numerator and denominator by the same thing, we end up, effectively, we're multiplying by 1, because this would effectively multiply by 1. So, you're going to multiply the numerator and denominator of this by 2 minus 3 root 2. So, multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2 minus 3 root 2. So, what I'm going to do here is, I'm actually going to write this out in FOIL method here. Now, for the top one, it's just going to be 6 minus 9 root 2. Now, for the bottom, I'm just going to do this. I'm not going to need to make a grid. 2 plus 3 root 2, 2 minus 3 root 2, which is going to simplify to 4 plus 6 root 2, minus 6 root 2, minus 9 times 2. Now, those middle terms will cancel out. You have 4 minus 18, which is negative 14. So you have negative 14 here. Now, I personally would accept something like this. Now, you could do negative 6 over 14 plus 9 root 2 over 14, and you could simplify the negative 6 over 14 and get negative 3, root I mean, negative 3 over 7 plus 9 root 2 over 14. So, I would accept either way myself. Now, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stop because that is the radical part. I hope this helped you out a bit. So, I'm going to make a second presentation on rations. Okay, so welcome back to one of many videos that you're going to encounter here in this class. So, one of the other ideas here, you know, factoring, one thing you should always look for is a common factor right off the bat. And what I mean by that is factoring this 6x squared plus 15x plus 6, the problem with that is we're going to have some pretty big numbers to deal with. Uh, I'm actually going to show you this using both ways. Uh, so we need to have a sum of 15 and a product of whatever 6 times 6 is, which is 36. So the two numbers that add to 15 and multiply to 36 are going to be 12 and 3. So you have 6x squared plus 12x plus 3x plus 6. You could also do 3x and 12x, of course, you know, because we've already demonstrated that order will not matter. So we take the greatest common factor out of each of those, and what we'll get is we can take a 6x out of here. We'll have x plus 2, and we can take a 3 out of these, giving us x plus 2. So what happens is we have 6x plus 3 multiplied by x plus 2. Now, technically, we could take a 3 out of this first part, and it would become 2x plus 1, and then x plus 2. Now, let me pause something here real quick. All right, so what I want to do, now the other way you can do this, of course, is you can look for an outright common factor. Between 6, 15, and 6, we can take a 3 out, and that will become 2x squared plus 5x plus 2. So now that 3 will be on the outside. We need two numbers that have a sum of 5 and a product of 4, you know, because 2 times 2 is 4. And the two numbers that are going to give us that are 4 and 1. Now, if this 3 will stay on the outside. We can kind of take it off or put it back. Either way, you know, we'll have 2x squared plus 4x plus x plus 2. And we could, we have to do factor by grouping. We could take a 2x out of this, giving us x plus 2. We can since there's nothing common there, we can only take a 1 out, and that gives us x plus 2. So we'll have x plus 2 times 2x plus 1. But what did we take out of the whole thing? We took a 3 out. So 
yeah, in reality, you can do this either way. I like doing it this way because, frankly, it's a heck of a lot easier. And I'm only going to do that method with this second one. I'm going to take a 4 out because I can't take an 8 out. So it'll become 2x squared plus 11x minus 40, not 42, but 21. So we need two numbers that have a sum of positive 11 and a product of negative 42 because 2 and negative 21 multiply to negative 42. So the two numbers that are going to make that work are 14 and negative 3. So we can leave the 4 on or off as we factor this. I'm just going to leave it off. You know, 2x squared plus 14x minus 3x minus 21. Now, of course, you could write it 2x squared minus 3x plus 14x. We've established that. I'm going to hammer that in your heads, hopefully. I could take out a 2x here, giving us x plus 7. And since this is a negative 3, I have to take a negative out, and it can be negative 3 times x plus 7. So I result with, I end up with x plus 7 times 2x minus 3, and don't forget the 4 that I took out. So that's how we factor, that's a slightly easier way to factor uh, quadratics with big numbers here. All right, so we're not going to be able to get to all of these here, so we're now on, let's see, what page are we on? We're on page 10. So this negative 3 times the square root of 18. Now, I'll have established with on how to do these in class. I'm actually going to go through all of these here. Now, what you always have to do is factor whatever the radical is into a product of primes. So, for instance, the 8 will go into 4 and 2. That 2 will be circled and the 4 will be 2 and 2. So what happens here is we have 5 times square root of 2 times square root of 2 times square root of 2. Since we're dealing with square roots, we only need two of the same thing to come to the dance. So these two will join up. It doesn't really matter which two. It becomes 5 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, but we know the square root of 4 is 2. 5 times 2 times the square root of 2, and of course, remember, holes by holes, radical by radical. So the final answer is going to be 10 times the square root of 2. Now, square 28, let's break that apart. 28 will be 4 times 7, now the 7 is prime, and the 4 is 2 and 2. So this will become 4 times root 2, root 2, and then root 7. The root 2 and root 2, you can write the intermediate step or not. Basically, it's 4 times 2 times root 7, or simply 8 root 7. One thing I highly recommend you do is verify the decimal equivalents you know, between 4 times the square root of 28 and 8 times the square root of 7. So negative 3 times the square root of 18 18 is going to be 2 times 3 times 3. So we have a negative 3 times root 2 times root 3 and root 3. These will form a whole 3. Negative 3 times root 2 times 3. This will become negative 9 times the square root of 2. Pretty simple, huh? I thought so. So, basically, Whenever you're adding and subtracting radicals, it's, uh, you treat the radical as kind of its own variable. So, for instance, we'll have done these, you know, we'll do the first one in class. Notice that we have the same thing here. So basically, you just add what's in front, 2 plus 7 minus 3, which is uh, 6. And this becomes... 6 times the square root of 5. Again, verify that in your calculator. 
Now for this one, we have 7 root 11 minus 4 root 11, which will become 3 root 11. 8 root 3 plus 2 root 3 will become 10 root 3. So that's how that works. Now for these problems, I'm going to go over this second one here. Now square root of 3 is as simple as it gets. Square root of 12 is equivalent to 2 root 3. So what happens is we have 4 root 3 minus 6 times 2 root 3. 4 root 3 minus 12 root 3 and that is going to give us negative 8 times the square root of 3. So what's interesting is, yeah, you can verify the decimal equivalence on the Texas Instruments calculator. Now the nice thing is I used Casio before and they'll actually simplify radicals for you. Yours won't and you have to work. <laughs> so what's going to happen here is uh, do some foil style calculations. I'm actually going to go ahead and do this one. Now, we've already talked about this kind of earlier. You know, we have 4 minus 2 root 3, and then we'll have 2 and positive 3 root 5. So 4 times 2 is 8. For this one, we have negative 4 root 3. For this one, we have 12 root 5. And then this one, we have negative 6 times the square root of 15. This one turns out to be very ugly. It's simply 8 minus 4 root 3 plus 12 root 5 minus 6 root 15. I'm never going to actually give you one like that. But you're going to work on that second one in class. And you're going to find something really neat about it. So, moving along here... Sometimes we might need to do what's called rationalizing a denominator. Now, I'm going to have discussed the rules with this. Basically, we can't have any radicals in our denominator. So, if I wanted to multiply, you know, get rid of that, what happens here, now, I need to get rid of a root 2. So, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by root 2. And what's going to happen is that's going to make that 5 times root 3 times root 2. And that'll be 3 times 2, which is 6. Now, we can simplify you know, root 3 and root 2, which will become root 6, and then 6. So what you need to do is make sure you verify the decimal equivalence in your calculator. Now square root of 7 eighths. Uh, there's actually two ways to do this. Uh, method 1 and I'll call it method 2. So obviously either way we're going to have square root of 7 over the square root of 8. Now one way to do this would be to simply multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 8. Now what happens here is we have square root of 56 over 8, but that is not simplified. What has to happen is we have to now break apart the square root of 56. 56 is going to be 2 times 28. 28 is 2 times 14, and then we have a 7 and a 2. So we have three twos and a seven, root two, root two, root two, root seven, all over eight. Well, this will become a two all by itself. So we'll have two times square root of 14 over eight. Now, if you remember the rule, radicals by radicals, holes by holes, this eight will become a four, we'll divide out by the twos for a one, so the final answer will just be root 14 over 4. Now method 2, uh, we'll still start off with square root of 7 over the square root of 8. But we're going to simplify radicals immediately. Now the numerator doesn't simplify, but the denominator will become 2 root 2. If we multiply the top and bottom by the root 2, square root of 2, what happens is we get square root of 14 
over 2 times root 2 times root 2, this will become a 2. Basically, it becomes root 14 over 4. So conventional wisdom would say multiply both by the square root of 8, but I always like to simplify the radical first. I like to multiply it by a smaller radical because if you do it that way, it makes it a heck of a lot easier. Trust me on that. So, what happens here is, yeah, if we have a radical like this, what you have to do is multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate, which is 5 minus 2 times the square root of 8. Now, from that example, a couple of pages ago, 8 minus 4 root 3 times 8 plus 4 root 3, that will become a whole number. So what's going to happen here? I'm going to show you what happens in the denominator, because the denominator will balance itself out. 5 plus 2 root 8 times 5 minus 2 root 8, and heck, you could simplify that 8 into a root 2, really doesn't make a difference. You could just do this in the calculator and simplify the numerator. That's the hard part. And I'm not going to give you one like that because we're going to... The purpose of doing this is that's going to help you when you get to Unit 3 with uh, imaginary numbers. So, yeah, fractions and all that good stuff. So we're now going to hit page you know, 12, 13... Now, sometimes some of this just doesn't carry over. You know, that should be 12x. So, for number 3, since our numerator, I mean, our denominator is common, we have 2x squared plus 2 over x squared plus 1. But, we can actually factor a 2 out of the numerator, x squared plus 1, over x squared plus 1, and the x squared plus 1's will eliminate each other, leaving us with a final answer of 2. Now, what if the denominator is not common? So, if you, so what's going to happen here is you're going to need to have a common denominator out of this. So, you'll have done the first one or two of these in class. 5x and 6x, now the you know, we don't need to multiply any x's here, but between 5 and 6, it's going to be 30. So our GCF is going to be 30x for this one. 12 over 5x plus 7 over 6x. So what do I need to multiply the numerator and denominator by of this one to make that 30x? Just 6. And what should I multiply the numerator and denominator by to get this? Just 5. So 12 times 6 is 78. No, 72 rather. That was my mistake. 72 over 30x plus 35 over 30x. Now some people will simplify these fractions, but it'll just take you right back to where you've, been, where you've gotten started. 72 and 35 is 107 over 30x. And that's how that works. Now for this number 4, that's a little more fun because we need to have a greatest common factor. Now between 3 and 4, it would be 12. But We'll have, we'd have to have an x squared. So we'll have 8 over 3x squared minus 5 over 4x. So we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator of this one to get a common, to get our common factor of 12x squared. 3x squared times what is 12x squared? 4. So it's going to be a 4 here. 4x times what is 12x squared? Well, 4x times 3x. So we'll have 3x here. So we'll have 32 over 12x squared minus 15x over 12x squared, leaving us with 32 minus 15x over 12x squared. 
Now, the purpose of doing this, you know, I'm going to be going over some of this with you in class. You're going to need to know how to do this when we get into uh, rational equations. So moving on into page 14, uh, one and two, we'll do those first two in class. So for this one here, x plus 4 over x squared minus 4, we know that that x squared minus 4 will factor into x plus 2, x minus 2. That's the reason why you really need to know your quadratic factoring. You need to know it like the back of your hand. We'll have 15 over x minus 2. So I need to get, I need to multiply this one by x plus 2 on each side so that I have a common denominator. So what happens is I have x plus 4 minus 15 times x plus 2 all over the common denominator of x plus 2, x minus 2. So I can just call, you know, I'll just call this the denominator for the time being for a little, you know, make things a little quicker. x plus 4 minus 15x minus 30 over the denominator. And yeah, it saves you a couple of seconds. So we'll have negative 14x minus 26. And that's as simplified as it gets. So we'll just rewrite the denominator one more time. Theoretically, you can take a 2 out of the numerator, so or a negative 2. In that case, you would have 7x plus 13 over x plus 2, x minus 2. Now, we're going to be doing this when we solve equations, so you really need to know this. We'll do that number 2 in class. So that is it for all the preliminary material. All right, everyone, welcome. And what I want to do now is show you how to deal with multiplying, dividing, adding, and subtracting rational expressions. Now, for those of you, you know, following along, it's going to be on page 12 of your notes. So, what you need to do here, I'm going to start with the real basics. This is something that you probably did back in Algebra 1. 8 divided by 2 which is 4, x to the third divided by x to the first, it's going to be x to the second, y to the fourth divided by y is going to be y to the third. Now, unfortunately, not everything will be as simple here. So for instance, number 2, 15 over 10, that's going to simplify to 3 over 2. So we're going to have a 3 over 2 here. Now, x to the third over x to the fifth, it's the same thing as 1 over x squared. So we're going to put an x squared in the denominator. We always have to have positive exponents. And y squared over y just becomes y in the numerator. So that's where that comes from. Now, all you have to do, all you have to do is simply divide out common factors, and simplify. So to simplify this expression, since this is a x plus 1 is the same thing, you're just going to be left with 2 over x plus 3. Now, if this were a rational function, the domain would still exclude negative 1 because it's still original in there. Now, what we need to do is simplify some uh, quadratic here this numerator will become x minus 5 times x plus 3. Now, the denominator will become x plus 3, x minus 3. Now, hopefully, what you see here is the numerator and denominator have an x plus 3. Now, they can be canceled out. They have to be exactly the same. They cannot have a different sign or anything to that table. Now, for this one, we have x plus 4. Now, in the denominator, we'll have x plus 4, x minus 4. Now, we cancel out the x plus 4. In the numerator, we have to be left with a 1, and it'll be x minus 4. 
Now, back in school, back as early as elementary or middle school, you multiplied and divided fractions. So, basically, to multiply two fractions together, you multiply the numerators and the denominators, and you simplify if possible. Now, when you divide two fractions, it's simply the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So instead of, so if we had A over B divided by C over D, we flip the second one and that's what we get. So, basically, there are a couple of routes that you can take with problems like these. And all you have to do, what I would just do is, I would go as, yeah, I would simplify each term individually. So 5x to the third over y, well, I know that's going to simply become an x here. Now y over y squared, that'll cancel out, and I'll have a y here. So right now, I will have 5x over y. Now for this one, there's nothing simplifying, so I have y to the third over 15x to the second. Now, I could treat this as just one big thing, so the x and that x, that'll cancel out. This y, and that'll become a y to the second. 5 over 15 will become 1 over 3. So ultimately, the final answer for this is going to be y squared over 3x. Now, that's going to come in, you know, for number two, it's actually easier to just do the, you know, basically treat this as one big numerator, one big denominator. X minus two, and you have the X is gone, and what you're left with is X minus three times X plus three. Oh, sorry, I'm going to drop my connection here. Let me just put it back up. X minus three times X plus three. And that is the final answer. Now, sometimes they would just want you to do the whole thing, x squared minus 9. Now, for the this last one here, we've got to do a little bit of factoring. We can take a 3 out and have x minus 4 over x plus 5 times x plus 6 over 2 times x minus 4. So we can get rid of the x minus 4s here. And we're left with 3 times x plus 6 over 2 times x plus 5. And there, folks, is your final answer. Now, we can simplify this even more. And what, what we can do here, we could simplify these individual expressions x squared plus 3x minus 4, that will become x plus 4 times x minus 1. x squared plus 4x plus 4, that will become x plus 2 times x plus 2. Now, 2x squared plus 4x, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this smaller so you can do number 2 here. I can take out a 2x, and that will leave me with x plus 2 here. And here... I'll have x minus 3 times x minus 1. Now, I can see quite a bit that can get factored out. x minus 1, goodbye. The x plus 2 can go away here. So ultimately, I'm left with 2x times x plus 4 over x plus 2 times x minus 3. So, that's going to be my final answer. You can distribute or not. Again, that is kind of up to you. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and kind of move this off to the side so that we can see a little better. And we're just going to keep on factoring. Basically, I emphasized on day one that we would need to be able to factor quadratic expressions. And as you can probably tell, that's never going to go away. Here. So, for this one, x squared minus 3x minus 10, that will become x minus 5 
times x plus 2. Now, x squared minus 2x minus 15 becomes x minus 5 times x plus 3. Now, for the second part, x squared plus 10x plus 21, notice that there's no denominator. Just put a 1 underneath it. Now, we could do x plus 7 times x plus 3. Now, we can do the cancellations. I see an x plus 3 can go, and x minus 5 can go, leaving us with x plus 2 times x plus 7, or x squared plus 9x plus 14 for the final answer. Now, for this number 3, that's going to be a little bit more fun. Now, before I actually get into that, again, I'm going to make some more room here. So I'm going to make that a bit smaller now, since we really don't need it anymore. So I know I tend to write a little big here. We're going to do our factoring. x plus 5, you have 4 times x minus 4, times, I could take a 2 out, that leaves me with x squared minus 16, and I'll just do x plus 4, x minus 4. And then for the x squared minus 25, I'll do x plus 5, x minus 5. And then let's factor. Let's cancel some terms out. So the x plus 5 will go. Now the x minus 4s will go. Now the other thing is we have 2 and a 4 here, so what I'm going to go ahead and do, make that a 1, and that becomes a 2. Ultimately, we have x plus 4 over 2 times x minus 5 for the final answer. So that's how that will work. Now, when we do division, make sure to divide by the reciprocal here. Yeah, I do have quite a lot of examples here. You probably won't need all of these, but I always believe in repetition here. So the first thing I'm going to do with this first one here is I'm going to rewrite it. I'm always going to just rewrite everything. So 5x squared times y to the third over x to the seventh times y to the third over 30 x times y to the fourth. Now, again, I could do these individually. I'm just going to put it all as one and then simplify as I go. I only have one constant here. I have a 5. I only have one x squared here, so that'll just be an x squared. y to the third times y to the third becomes y to the sixth. We divide that by 30 I have an x to the 7th and an x, so that will become x to the 8th. And I only have one y, so that becomes a y to the 4th. Now, 5 over 30 will become 1 over 6. x squared over x to the 8th, I have an x to the negative 6, which means we go down there. And y to the 6 over y to the 4th, I have a y squared here. So that 1 that you see there is optional. Now, for number two, I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. So I'm going to rewrite this x plus 3 times x minus 2 over x times x plus 1. And instead of dividing, we're going to have it multiplied by x over x plus 3. So the x plus 3s will go, and so will the x's. Our final answer will be x minus 2 over x plus 1. So, pretty straightforward and simple for that one. Now, for number 3, we're going to rewrite it again. So, I'll have x minus 9 times x plus 3 over 2x times x plus 1 multiplied by x squared over x minus 9, x minus 5. Again, Let's do our cancellations. Obviously, the x minus 9s are going to cancel, so we can say goodbye to those. Now, this x squared and that x, that x will just go away, and that will just become a simple x. 
and that is all we can do here. So the final answer for this will be x times x plus 3 over 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 5. So that's all she wrote for that. So moving forward, and the good thing is you can pause this at any old time. So here's a couple that we're going to have to simplify. Oh, you're going to get tired of this, I know. But x squared plus 12x, uh, time out, I'm actually going to rewrite that as a factored quadratic. So I'll have x plus 4 times x plus 8 here, multiplied by 6 times x plus 7. Now, instead of dividing, we're going to multiply. x squared minus 49 is going to become x plus 7, x minus 7, x squared plus 4x will become x times x plus 4. And then we do our cancellations. x plus 4 goes away, x plus 7 goes away. So, our final answer will be x plus 8 multiplied by x minus 7 over 6x. All right, so, little interruption there. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and factor out the numerator and denominator here. So this will become x minus three times x minus five, and we'll multiply, we'll take out an x here, it'll be x times x plus four, and obviously we can put a one underneath that, so it'll be one over x minus 5 times x plus 4. So that's what we get for that. So we do our cancellations yet again. And for the numerator, we have x minus 3. For the denominator, we have x times x plus 4. And since it occurred twice, you just put a second power there. All right, so that's how you... Uh, multiply and divide rational expressions. We're going to get into the adding and subtracting part. Now, we're going to end up doing partial fractions here, so this is going to be kind of necessary. So, three. I'm actually going to start very early on here. So the LCD, we need to figure out the LCD. The LCD, or least common denominator, will be 10. So, my common denominator is already a 10 for the second fraction. I multiply the top and bottom by 2. So I have 6 over 10 plus 1 over 10 for a final answer of 7 over 10. Now, for this one, I can, obviously, all three factors, I can leave it as 3 times 5 times 7 or leave the LCD as 105. Now, basically, for this first one, I multiply by 5 and 7 here. Basically, you multiply by what you don't have here. So we have 70 over 105 minus, let's see, I'm missing a 3 and a 7 here, minus 21 over 105. And for this one, I'm missing a 3 and a 5. So 4 times 3 times 5, that would be 60, plus 60 over 105. So uh, we're going to get a, in, we're going to just leave it as an improper fraction and get 109 out of 105. Now, I know that seemed probably trivial, but you got to know how to do some fractions here. Now, since we're dealing with binomials, if... For instance, x plus 2, we just simply combine the numerator, 3 plus x minus 1, over x plus 2, which simply becomes x plus 2 over x plus 2, and just becomes 1. Now, you can try these. Basically, they have the same denominator. 
So what you can do is you have 9 over 4x. Now you have 2 over 12x here, although you could actually simplify 1 over 6x. And you have 2x squared plus 2 over x squared plus 1. However, you can actually factor out a 2, 2 times x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1, canceling those out, and you are left with a 2. All right. Now, to get a common, what you have to do is get a common denominator for each of these. So the LCD is going to be 4x here. All I do is multiply the top and bottom of this one by 2. So I have 10 over 4x plus 3 over 4x. Don't simplify the individual parts because that will just take you back to the original part. So my final answer would be 13 over 4x. Now for this one, we consider the LCD of 5 and 6 to be 30 x and x is just x, so it's going to be 30x. So for this first factor, I'll multiply the top and bottom by 6, and I'll multiply the top and bottom of this one by 5. So 6 times 12, that is 72 over 30x, plus 35 over 30x. So that's going to end up being 107 over 30x. Now, for this one, least common denominator between 3 and 4 is going to be 12. And between x squared and x, it'll be x squared. So to get 3x squared equal to 12x squared, I'll multiply the top and bottom by 4. And the top and bottom of this one by 3x. You Remember, you have to multiply the top and bottom of this case. It's not where you multiply everything out by the LCD, you have to actually multiply everything. So, you have 32 over 12x squared minus 15x over 12x squared, and it's just going to be 32 minus 15x over 12x squared. And that's all you need to do. That's it. Now, Whenever the denominators are binomials, it's a lot more interesting, but they are doable, so don't freak out, and that's actually going to be the end. We're nearing the end. Hoorah. Now, for this one, the LCD is going to be the product of x plus 8 and x minus 3. So, for the first factor, which is 12 over all that, I already have the LCD there. So I need to have an x plus 8 in the numerator and in the denominator. So that's what I'm going to get there. So I have 12 plus 3 times x plus 8. Sorry, my wife is walking in the house. 12 plus 3 over x plus 8. And we can just say, divide it by the LCD. So simplifying, we have 12 plus 3x plus 24 over the LCD. And then final answer is 3x plus 26. Not, not 26, but rather it's going to be 3x plus 36. And we can now put the LCD as x minus 3 times x plus 8. So for the second one, what we need to do is we have two different factors, x plus 4 and x minus 6. So what we need to do is we know our common denominator is just going to be the product of them. So it'll just be x plus 4 times x minus 6. So Doing a little math, well, you have to do some math. Multiply this first factor of an x minus 6, you know, x plus 4, x minus 6, minus 1, and since that factor was missing the x minus, I mean, x plus 4, 
we multiply the top and bottom by x plus 4. <coughs> so, you have 3x minus 18 minus 1x minus 4. Remember, be mindful of your signs here over the LCD, which will end up simplifying to 2x minus 22 over x plus 4 times x minus 6. And that's the final answer for that one. All right, so what we've got to do for this is basically you realize you've got to have everything in the denominator. So we're going to rewrite these in factored form. So for this first one, you have x plus 4 over x minus 2 times x plus 2 minus 15 over x minus 2. Now, since the first part already contains an x minus 2, I just need an x plus 2. So here it is. So there is the x plus 2. And so now we have a common denominator. You can do x plus 4 minus 15 times x plus 2 over the LCD. And again, be sure to mind your signs. x plus 4 minus 15x minus 30 over the LCD, which ultimately becomes negative 14x plus 26 divided by x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now, for our last one, what you've got to do is, again, factor, 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 never ends. So for the x to the second minus 2x minus 8, that's x minus 4 times x plus 2. I'm going to leave some room here, and you'll see why in just a minute. Now for this one here, I have x minus 5 divided by, let's see, that'll be x minus 4, x minus 8. So, in the first one, we are missing a x minus 8. So, I'm going to bring an x minus 8 in here. And for the second one, we are missing an x minus, I mean, x plus 2. So, now that we have everything... Now, it's going to get a little weird here because we're going to have to deal with some sign stuff. But we have x plus 3 times x minus 8 minus x minus 5, x plus 2 over that big LCD, which I would not actually make you multiply those three out because that's a real, real pain in the butt. But... In foiling, you have x squared minus 5x minus 40 minus the quantity x squared, see, minus 5x plus 2x, that would be minus 3x minus 10. And simplifying that, because we have to negate everything inside of there, you have x squared minus x squared, which will just you can just get rid of, negative 5x plus 3x, which becomes negative 2x, negative 40 plus 10, which will become negative 30, over that giant LCD of x minus 4, x plus 2, x minus 8. Now, just for a little larf, if you email me, the phrase, Homer rocks. And that's a nerd. You email me the phrase, Homer rocks, to my Wayne Community College email, no later than Labor Day. Now, Labor Day is too much. Let's see. Today's the 22nd. I'm going to give you until the 26th. What I'm going to do is, Remember, your grade's out of 10,000 points. I will give you an extra 50 points. 
So that's an extra one half percent of your grade. So if you email me that, that will get you some points. Hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Thank you and good day. All right, so this is the last of the preliminary videos here. And I want to throw this in here because I think it's important. So basic equation solving. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Make sure you combine like terms. So we're going to add the 8 to both sides. We'll get 3x equal to 27. If we divide both sides by 3, we're going to get x equal to 9. Now, for the next couple ones, we're going to have uh, some distributive non-stuff in here. So we would have 10x minus 25 equaling 48 minus 56x plus 26. Now, before we move anything over to one side or whatever, we have to make sure like terms are combined. Now, on the left side, we're good. Now, on the right side, 48 and 26, uh, let's see, that would be 68, so we would have 74 minus 56x. So, we have some options as to what we can do here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add the 25 to both sides. And notice it, yeah, I'm adding it to a constant, so we get 10x equal to... 99 minus 56x. And then we're going to add 56x to both sides. And we're going to get 66x equals 99. x will be 99 over 66, which does happen to simplify to... 9 over 6, if we divide out by 3 here, it's just going to be 3 halves. All there is to it. So basically, I'm going to go ahead and combine the like terms here now. So we have negative 1 minus 10x, and then we have negative 7x plus 35 minus 10x minus 8. So negative 1 minus 10x will equal negative 17x plus 27. I'm going to add 10x to both sides. So what happens here, we get negative 1 equaling negative 7x plus 27. If we take away the 27 from both sides, what we'll get here is negative 28 equaling negative 7x. So x will equal 4. So that'll take us into the next one. You get 48x minus 40 equal to 50x minus 35 minus 2x minus 12. You know, 48x minus 40 will equal... 48x minus 47. Now, if I take away the 48x from both sides, what happens here, we get negative 40 equal to negative 47. That is a contradiction. Now, we're not going to see that very much here, you know, especially with quadratic equations, because with quadratic equations, uh, there's always going to be solutions. This we're going to see when we get into the last unit with systems of equation. But this is what we call a contradiction. And what happens is there is no solution. Or the empty set. Now, for this next one, we'll have 6 plus 3x minus 6 equal to negative 28 plus 7x. So 3x will equal negative 28 plus 7x. I'll take away the 7x from both sides. We get negative 4x equal to negative 28. x will equal 7. 
Now for this last one, for this last equation that we want to solve, we'll have 6x minus 15 equal to 6x minus 12 minus 3. 6x minus 15 equals 6x minus 15. Now basically what will happen here, 0 equals 0, this is infinite solutions. Now we're going to see that when we get into quadratic equation, I mean systems of equations in the sixth and final unit. Now, for linear equation, the standard slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is your y intercept. So, all we have to do, we would want to start by plotting the y-intercept on the y-axis and use the slope to find more points. Now, this coordinate plane that we have here is what we're going to be doing all of our graphs on. So, the horizontal and vertical lines meet, they're in the center of the graph. They're the x and y axis, and you can see here x and y, and they meet at the coordinate point 0, 0, which happens to also be known as the origin. Now, y-intercept is where the function touches the y axis, or the graph touches the y axis. x-intercept is where it touches the x axis. Now, Functions that we will be speaking of will only have an x and a y intercept. I mean, they'll have one, uh, they'll always have one y intercept, but there can be multiple x intercepts. But for a line, we're just going to keep it as simple, as simple as it possibly can. So for that, uh, y intercept, that's where the x value is 0, and x-intercept is where y is 0. So slope is rise over run. Now again, this is some rather basic stuff here, but you know I do want to make sure you get this. Now if you need to find the slope, uh, it's y sub 2 minus y sub 1, the change in the y's over the change in the x's, basically. So, that triangle symbol simply does mean change. So, if I wanted to graph y equals 2x minus 6, now, from the y-intercept, so this negative 6 is the y-intercept. Now, in a minute, we're going to be able to determine the x-intercept. Now, the slope is 2, but what we could do is just call it 2 over 1 or up 2 and over 1. So if we go up 2 and over 1, all we really need are two points. Up 2 and over 1, up 2 and over 1. I like to just drive the point home. Now, what happens here, we have the x-intercept. Now, uh, mathematically, I mean, algebraically, we're going to figure out the y-intercept. Now, the y-intercept is where x is 0. So y will equal 2 times 0 minus 6. y will equal negative 6 for the y-intercept or 0, negative 6 as a coordinate pair. Now, for the next one, the x-intercept, that is where y is 0. So, we have 0 equal to 2x minus 6, x will equal 3. So, 3, 0 is going to be the x-intercept. And you can also tell that graphically. So, we're going to identify the slope and intercepts for this one, y equals 2 thirds x minus 4. So we start here, we go up 2 and over 3.
and it's positive, so we always go to the right. Up 2 and over 3. So the slope is 2 third. The y-intercept is going to be negative 4, or sometimes they might actually ask you for a coordinate, so you'd have to do 0, negative 4. The x-intercept is going to be at 6, or 6, 0. Now for this next one, y equals negative 1 fifths x plus 1, we start here at positive 1, then we go down 1 and over 5. Then we'll just do it again. And we can do the opposite pattern here. And this is what we get. So the slope is negative 1 over 5. The y-intercept is at positive 1 or 0, 1. The x-intercept is at 5 or 5, 0. Now, what if we don't have an equation solved for y? Well, what we have to do is solve it for y. So for this one, 3x minus 2y equaling 12, we're going to take away the 3x from both sides, and no, 12 minus 3x is not 9x. Yet negative 2y equal to negative 3x plus 12 then what we're going to do is divide every single term by negative 2. So for this, we would get y equal to 3 halves x minus 6. So this negative 6 is our y-intercept. We go up 3 and over 2, and we can just do that repeatedly. And that's what you're going to get. All right, so let's do this next one here. So 5x plus 3y will equal 15. We'll take away the 5x from both sides, and we'll get 3y equal to negative 5x plus 15. We divide everything by 3. So y will equal negative 5 thirds x plus 5. So we start here at positive 5, go down 5 and over 3, down 5, over 3. And that's what you're going to get. All right, so the last part here, equations might only appear with, one, with only one variable. Anytime you have an equation of the form y equals c, that's a horizontal line where y equals c. Now, if it's a vertical line, if it, or if it's x equals c, then it's going to be a vertical line passing through the point c0. I always like to think of this as hoi vux. Horizontal, zero slope, and y variable vertical line undefined and x only. I think, and I learned that uh, over a decade ago, and that's the way to do it. So y equals 3, that's a horizontal line going right here. x equals negative 1, very crappy, but it's a vertical line, and y equals negative 4. All right, so that is the end of these preliminary videos, and I hope you enjoyed. Thank you, and have a great day.